Okay, not exactly the scale or accuracy, but I want you to get concept today. So if we're talking mouth at the top and down here, we're talking anus or rectum, right? We have an entry point, we have an exit point, that's our gut. Now what I want you to understand about the gut is it is a quarantine zone, meaning that its job is not to accept everything in to your bloodstream. Its job is to separate what's in your food, good or bad, indifferent, right? And it's to take what's in your food that is good, the vitamins, the minerals, the carbs, the fats, the proteins, the nutrients, etc., and absorb them into your bloodstream and to take the waste and the, the bacteria and the endotoxins and the chemicals and to help you expel them. So that is the primary function of the GI tract. Now there are five major barriers that the GI tract uses to help accomplish this function. And so one of them is stomach acid. So we'll call that barrier number one. We've got acid in the stomach and that acid's designed to kill bacteria, parasites, viruses, other types of infectious microorganisms that we might come into contact with through our eating. Remember, eating is not, eating is an act of warfare. A lot of people don't realize that either, but when you eat, it's you versus the food, and food is not necessarily 100% benign. Food has negative and degradative properties to it, even the healthiest of foods. So again, our job of our gut is to take those, those potential dangers and to negate them. And so if our barriers, our five barriers are working well, the first one is acid. So acid destroys bacteria and other things that don't belong further down in the GI tract. But then we also have another barrier in that barrier. And I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of draw a close up of, or a section, a cross section of GI cells. So you've got cells that line the GI tract and in between these cells, you've got little proteins. It's almost like if you've ever owned the Lego blocks when you were a kid and you snapped them together the snaps on the Lego blocks are a lot like the snaps between the cells in your gut lining. So again, if this is part of the gut tube, it's where we get the cells if those, if those, if those little anchor proteins are not doing their job properly, this is where we develop leaky gut or intestinal permeability. So these proteins are called tight junctions. You've probably heard of them. If you follow functional medicine, you might have heard of these already, but tight junctions are one of the barriers as well. Now, in addition to that, we've got within the GI tract, we have a layer of snot. And that sounds kind of gross, but that's what it is. It's a layer of mucus on the surface of our GI cells. And that mucus serves as a physical barrier. And inside that mucus, you make a protein, an antibody called secretory immunoglobulin A. So that antibody, very, very critical for protecting you from infections, for binding to things like yeast and parasites and binding to toxins so that you can poop them out. So if you don't have a solid or a strong mucosal barrier, you can get into big trouble and that can contribute to a leaky gut. Then we have a fourth barrier. And that fourth barrier, let's use a different color, is the bacteria, oftentimes referred to as the microbiome. So think about it, it's embedded in the mucus, it's embedded on the mucus, and oftentimes referred to as the microbiome. Some people call it probiotics, but these are your good bacteria, your good fungus, your, your good yeast, right? The guys that are supposed to be there, that live there, these things help to break down your food for you, so they help you digest your food. They also help prevent overgrowth of other infectious microorganisms. They also talk to your immune system about the status of the GI tract. They help you produce B vitamins and vitamins like vitamin K. So these guys are extremely important aspect to your GI tract and one of the major barriers. Then we have one more. Uh, we have more than five, but I want to focus on these five tonight because I think it's important that you understand these five. So the fifth one is really it's behind the intestinal lining. And so think of it as a, as a web-like mesh of material behind the intestinal lining that is full of immune cells. As a matter of fact, this is called the GALT, the gastro-associated lymphoid tissue. It's fifth barrier. It represents about 70 to 80 percent, depending on which scientific article you read, of your entire immune system. So that's a pretty big important job and what that tells us the gut's important enough that we harness 70% at least of our immune power behind the wall in case something breaks through 
and again, the leaky gut, we've got a lot of immune power there to fight back. So this barrier is very critical. So if you understand that there are these five primary barriers, you're going to understand a lot more about what kind of tests are important for leaky gut, what kind of supplements or what kind of food is going to be helpful for recovering a leaky gut. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.